The K Jazz Show Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2. Our next guest is one of South Africa's leading pianists, film and theatre music composers of his generation. Carl Shepard is internationally recognized for his distinctive compositional style and performances. A multi-award winning musician with seven albums, including several film, TV and theatre scores. Carl is also the artistic director at this year's second annual Journey to Jazz Festival, which happens from the 1st to the 5th of May 2024. He joins us on the line now talking about the road to Prince Albert and what is in store for the Journey to Jazzers this year. Kyle, welcome to Coffee FM. Thank you so much. It's nice to be talking to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. You know, it is the second year for the Journey to Jazz, Kyle, a festival that you performed in last year as part of the artist lineup. A new season is upon mm. us now, and uh, you're back, and this time as the artistic director for the festival, you know, taking over from Bogani Dyer. What is it about the Journey to Jazz Festival that keeps you coming back? Yeah, um, you know, it, it really is, I would say, the, the charm of, of the little town, you know, that's Prince Albert. I think anyone that's been there, um, you know, as a tourist, as a visitor, can attest to the type of feeling that one, one gets in, in, in Prince Albert. You know, it's, it's very much the, the Western Cape uh, and the Karoo region sort of small town a feeling that once get one gets there's a charm to it and then i would say throw in a jazz festival and for someone like myself who, who loves the music who loves um, the music played in understated uh, situations uh, where where we can really appreciate the, the musicianship and the, the artistry of, of those we're listening to as opposed to big commercial festivals that we all know in the, in the bigger cities mm. so that's part of the charm and it's something i find in love with and uh, as as playing there as an artist at the Journey to Jazz Festival. Um, but coming on board as part of the team, as the artistic director, it's been a wonderful journey so far. It's been about six months that I, I've been on the team. Um, and and what, what's really moved me is just, you know, how um, the team, you know, how much they care about, firstly, the community of Prince Albert, the community of North End, which is within Prince Albert, and what Prince Albert Community Trust, the fantastic work they're doing with young people in, in Prince Albert, empowering them through many, many initiatives, but one of them importantly being the Journey to Jazz Festival. So, you know, I've played on, on many, many festivals all around the world. Um, in 53 countries around the world now. And um, what's unique about Journey to Jazz is I've never really seen a festival that employs and galvanizes the community, you know, where the festival is hosted in a way mm-hmm. that that uh, Journey to Jazz has 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 managed to do so. Young people, uh, previously disadvantaged people, in some cases currently, you know, very much mm. disadvantaged in many ways, um, and so that that's something that that inspires me, and it's something that I I'm happy to be part of. You know, this year's festival, Kyle, has a bit of a twist, you know. I mean, we are paying homage to a specific narrative of the Western Cape musical inheritance. Let's unpack this for a moment. I mean, what did, what does that mean? Sure. Well, uh, it, it being uh, the it, Prince Albert being the region that it is, I mean, the Karoo itself has a long history of, of musical heritage, musical identity, you know, going right back to the, the first nation of people, the Khoi and the Sun in that region, a nomadic people, of course, um, 
you know, move through that region and so on. And if one on an ethnomusicologist or ethnomusicology sort of standpoint, one can analyze and, and study that music, which is something I, I in fact, have, I have done in my, in the last few years. I did an album where I, where I improvised with some Khoi and San recordings and so on. So it's always been a sort of passion of mine. So the, the Karoo as a region you know, has su- such a rich history, uh, often often not celebrated or spoken about enough. Mm. Um, so by the mere fact of, of doing the festival in Prince Albert, one has to take all of that history into account, the Karoo Blues. Um, and, and in fact, we have something called the Karoo Jazz Project um, that this year would be uh, it's a, it's, it's local musicians from the region mentored by a wonderful um, pianist and composer, Ramon Alexander. Um, and it's important and we all, everyone in the team and myself, you know, um, we, we feel it's very important to pay homage and to give development opportunities to musicians from the region to share some, some insight and, and shed some light on the music of that region. And, and celebrate A wonderful initiative. In fact, I think the festivals, one of the key festivals objectives is to educate and we find ourselves using jazz as a vehicle to realize this objective. And maybe let's reflect from on this from last year's edition, I think throwing forward as well to 2024. You know, what are we doing differently as a festival this time around? And how do we measure? Mm-hmm you know, the impact that the festival has had on the community at large. You know, do we have more young people listening to jazz ever since the festival touched down? Or maybe are they even interested in jazz? Mm. I, I would say, you know, I've, I've not only uh, the 2023 version of, of um, Journey to Jazz, the first edition where, where I was there as a player. I've mm. since traveled there a few times to be part of the launch of, of a new, of a theater uh, in Prince Albert, a beautiful theater, the showroom. And I've been there a few times, gotten to know the, the local, um, the, the locals that are working on the team. And it certainly seems to, seems to me that there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, there's some, there's an energy that's been transmitted to the community. They care about the music. They, they're happy to be learning. From people like myself, people like Sis Brenda Sisane and, and the rest of the team, um, you know, learning about the ins and outs of how a jazz festival works. And it starts with love and appreciation for the music and the artist. And that filters down through every, every component and department um, logistically involved in running a festival like that so it's what again a, a unique team in that sense because there really is an appreciation and energy around, you know, real, well, real is the wrong word, around musicianship, artistry, really appreciating the music, you know, again, which is so different to the big, the very, very big corporate type of festivals that we see around yeah. South Africa. Mm. Um, so I've seen that, I've seen that growth from the very first uh, launch um, and announcement of the Journey to Jazz Festival back in September of 2022 which I happen to be part of and play that. I've seen a beautiful progression. Young people are energized, interested. They're putting so much love and care into realizing this festival. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is evident with the excitement that that gets carried by this 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 festival. You know, when you're there, you can almost you can almost touch the excitement. You can feel the music kind of taking mm. over. 
Kofi FM, we are in conversation with Carl Shepard, who is the artistic director at this year's Journey to Jazz Festival, of course, being held at the Gem of the Karoo, the beautiful town of Prince Albert. And of course, you were invited to come along with us for this five-day festival experience. Now, Carl, the five-day the five day program, of course, is a good mix, you know, of music, lifestyle events, and also includes workshops or even masterclasses in this instance that are offered to the festival patrons and the community of the Journey to Jazz. So the next mm. question is, what masterclass can we look forward to this year? Yeah, this this is um, this is a schedule that's ever evolving. As we get closer to the festival, of course, uh, many logistic challenges will will most likely arise. Mm. Um, so we, you know, every artist that we booked, in fact, um, and they'll go through the list, and I'll talk about some of the artists that I've um, that I've, you know, the, the the program that I've curated along with the team. Um, as we can fit it into the schedule, um, every artist will, will give a, a masterclass presentation, um, as is logistically possible on, on the days. Mm. Um, and this will be, you know, close contact workshop style for anyone interested in music. Um, any, any players or, uh, from any level from beginner to, uh, to advanced. Anybody just interested in, you know, the, the, the making of, you know, the making of the music. Um, and it's something that, that I quite enjoyed a lot in, at last year's edition as an artist is giving a workshop to people in the community. There were UCT students in, in attendance. And, and so it's that sharing and transmission of knowledge, which I expect to continue, um, this year. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, speaking of the festival, it, it, it features a great mix of, of, you know, local and international musicians. You know, let's go through yeah. what inspired this lineup now and who are on the list. I know they, they we only have a new list, you know, uh, still to come, but let's talk about the mm. current list. Who inspired that? Yeah. Yeah. So our, our first um, artist announcement just went out recently and um, I, I truly believe that it's a, a, a wonderful um, first artist announcement and I can tell the listeners that there are more to come and of course these these I, these ideas um, were curated by myself and um, in collaboration with uh, Brenda Sisane and we were quite closely on on really which type of artist we we wanted to approach and target to feature at the festival. Right. This festival has an undercurrent sort of theme um, on celebrating the pianist and the piano as a as a sort of stalwart and important pillar in South African jazz. Uh, South Africa has produced some of the world's great pianists. Uh, many many of our pianists around the world are recognized in the in the canon of of jazz music, um, and I I always thought to myself that you know it would be wonderful at the fest in a festival setting to 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 firstly say that to make that statement about the instrument and of course m more importantly the players of those instruments. Um, so uh, you know. In line with that, we've got people like Africa and Kizi, who for me is, a, you know, the greatest um, pianist of his generation in, in South Africa and somebody I personally look up to quite a lot. Um, we've got Tandi and Thule, who's of course also a wonderful um, pianist and composer. Also importantly, everyone that's on our, our lineup are instrumentalists, but also composers. So we've got a re original groups coming which is which has been an important um been an important aspect of the curatorial sort of scope you know mm. um we got a we got a swift south african collaboration called skyjack coming we've got um adam zanolini from chicago um, yeah. coming with his group we've got a wonderful pianist from italy coming who's, who's signed uh, signed to most likely the easily the biggest jazz label um in the world ecm the german label which which of course ha um, has on its roster keith jarrett uh, many chicory albums and so on and we all you know anyone that knows jazz knows ecm so we've got an ecm artist on the bill Mm. Um, his name's Giovanni Didi. He is coming with his trio. Um, the list goes on. Oh, we have the 2024 Standard Bank Young Artist of the Year, Darren English, is coming with his quartet. Yes. 
Um, then we have Cameron Ward, the guitarist uh, from Cape Town, coming with his band. Of course, Cameron is is very well known for um, uh, being being in Brayuma Sikela's band for many yes. years and traveled right. the world with mm. with Brayuma Sikela in the last five to ten years of his of his career uh, of Brayu's career. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to Cameron, who is a great friend, and then of course we have Jonathan Rubain. Who's, who's sort of on the the gospel meets jazz side of 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 our program, and he'll be performing on Sunday at at what we calling um, the People's Concert, which is an outdoor event, and will host uh, probably a few thousand people. Yeah. So we're very excited about that. Um, and as yeah. I said, uh, some more announcements are on the horizon. Some big ones that I am very excited about. And as I said, the the program as we lead up to um, to the festival, it's an ever evolving uh, process with exactly who will be playing on what day and what what time. You know, this is a this is sort of a, a living organism. Yes, as as people people have to fly in from from far far mm. um, fly in far distances. Um, but I, I personally am very excited about this lineup. I I think. It's very well comparable to an international festival lineup, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, you are the artist in residence, you know. And of mm-hmm. course, with such an impressive lineup, what can we expect from you, Kyle, musically? I mean, any surprises? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I um, I won't be playing as, as much as some people might expect. You know, my, my role in this year's festival has very much been as a director more than, for, uh, for example, an artist in residence. You know, it's more in terms of, uh, I, I've worked more as a curator of the lineup, um, which has been something interesting to me. I've worked as a creator, uh, curator before at places like the Norval Foundation and, and others. Mm. Um, and I find it interesting to, to be able to have this uh, relationship with artists and get them on the stage and and curate a series of concerts, um, you know, that firstly, um, uh, music that I appreciate, players that I feel people should hear, etc. Yeah. So I will be playing with, with, with Skyjack, which is the Swiss-South African collaboration. Um, perhaps I'll be playing some other concerts, but at this point, um, I'm really, my role is as the, the, the curator. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're certainly looking forward to an incredible festival. I mean, expecting it to even to even be louder, you know, than last year. You know, with all this incredible mm. artists and this wonderful, I suppose we can call it delicious lineup that you've got going on here. Mm. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. And of course, we can't wait to get together. I can't wait to see you again. You know, at the best yeah. destination, best jazz destination. You know, in uh, Prince yeah. Albert. Looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely, Carl. I thank you so. I uh, thank you so much, and I really hope to see as many people as possible come down to Prince Albert make a make a journey make a trip out of it um, you know it's really enjoyable uh, you won't regret it if you love jazz especially um, so yeah hope to see everyone that can make it there Pianist, composer, multi-award winning musician and the artistic director for the Journey to Jazz Festival 2024 Carl Shepard on the K-Jazz Show <laughs>